Hello everyone. So in this lecture, we are going to talk about the soma clonal variations happening in the plant systems. Now, what are soma clonal variations? So soma clonal variations are the genetic variations happening in the somatic cells when you're trying to produce clones of the plant cells. So if you know about the plant tissue culture, so when you're doing the plant tissue culture using an artificial uh, medium and you're trying to grow an explant out of it and then you grow a callus from that explant, in that callus, the cells that are present there, any kind of genetic variations that are occurring in those in vitro cultured cells, all of them collectively are known as the somatic variations. And the plants that are derived from such type of cells are referred to as the soma clones. So this is an important terminology. Now, soma clonal variations, they have been reported in almost all types of different plant tissue cultures that we've done so far. Now, there are several different reasons that why these soma clonal variations are occurring. So the primary reason is the genetic heterogeneity, which means that either there is a change in the number of chromosomes or in the structure of the chromosome in the plant tissue culture. So this can lead to soma clonal variation because Obviously, there is something happening within the genetic material due to which there is a different type of trait developing in the plant. And hence, you see that trait in the plant, which can be anything. Maybe it is a resistance to a specific type of disease, a bacteria or a virus, or maybe there is some pesticide, pesticide resistance occurring, or maybe there's some other trait occurring which is desirable for the scientific community. Now, all this genetic heterogeneity has different uh, reasons under it, such as polyploidy, aneuploidy can be there, chromosomal breakage, deletion, translocation, and gene amplification. And other than that, several different mutations can also lead to the genetic variability. Polyploidy means when there is a number, uh, there, there is a change in the number of uh, the alleles inside the genetic material. And aneuploidy is something like there is a variation in one specific type of uh, chromosome inside the set of chromosome inside the cell. And chromosomal breakage can be there that there is some breakage happening inside the genetic material. There can be deletion of a specific segment from the DNA. There can be translocation of the genes. There can be gene multiplication as well and different mutations, deletions, additions. Now let's understand that what are the different methods of the soma clonal isolation? How do you basically isolate the soma clones from the tissue cultures? How do you come to know that, okay, this is the cell or the plant which is having the genetic variability and it is having some kind of uh, desirable trait which we can select. So there are two methods. First is without in vitro selection and the second is with in vitro selection. When I talk about without in vitro selection, here we do not have anything to do in the in vitro process. So when you are taking an artificial medium and you're trying to grow an explant onto it, the plant so formed, you are not selecting any trait. You are not able to observe any kind of genetic variability in the in vitro conditions. But rather, when you take out this whole grown plant late and grow it in a field, there you come to know that, okay, this specific plant might be having this trait. And then you screen those plants against those traits. And you are not involving any kind of toxic or inhibitory substance in the without in vitro selection method. Whereas when we talk about the other method, which is with in vitro selection, the name itself is suggesting that you are selecting the plant or the desirable trait or any kind of genetic variability in the in vitro conditions itself. When the plant is being grown in the petri plate or the tube or the artificial medium, you are able to select the plant or the desirable trait in that level as well. So that is known as the with in vitro selection. And in this process, there is a presence of any kind of toxic or inhibitory substance against which we want to make the plant resistant. We will be able to understand this in much more detail in the coming slides. Let's just try to understand the process of without in vitro selection first. So here, as I told that there is no kind, there is not any kind of uh, selection happening in the in vitro conditions. So this is like a normal tissue culture process. You take the explant, you grow it in an artificial suitable medium, and then a callus is grown out of it. From the callus, there is shoot regeneration and then root regeneration, and hence the whole plant is formed. Now, up till this condition, this is happening in the in vitro conditions and you are not selecting anything. This is like a normal plant tissue culture. 
Now comes the next part. When this plant is grown in the laboratory conditions, you transfer it to the field. And now in the field, when the plants are growing, you are screening the plants for the desirable traits. You are looking for any kind of trait that might be useful for you. Maybe it is some kind of insecticide resistance, maybe some kind of pathogenic resistance, disease resistance. So you select the plant at the, um, uh, the agronomical trials. And then after the selection, if you have selected any plant which has any desirable trait, you do the screening and then you label it as the soma clonal variant and then you grow it further for looking uh looking that it is able to transfer that resistance in the coming generations as well and then you finalize that okay this plant now is a soma clonal variant and it has the desirable trait present some of the important examples of this kind of selection involves rice. So rice crop was made resistant against the pathogenic organism Helminthosporium or Isai. And there are several other examples of the different crops resistant against specific pathogenic organisms. And all this was done using without in vitro selection process. Now, there are certain limitations to the without in vitro selection process. The first is that the desirable traits are occurring purely by chance. This is like a hit and trial method because you are not using any kind of specific approach for this. There is no directed approach to this. So whatever is happening inside the plant system, if you are able to observe any trait, that is purely by chance. You have not done anything special to introduce those traits. Also, because this is like a hit and trial method, the procedure is time consuming because you have to screen a lot of plants to look for any desirable trait. On the other hand side, when we talk about the with in vitro selection process, where the selection is happening in the in vitro conditions itself, this is less time consuming because you don't have to involve long time for the screening of different plants in the field trials. So you're doing the trials in the laboratory conditions itself. And when you are selecting the plant in the in vitro conditions itself, it makes it easier for you to grow those plants only and screen them. You have to focus only on one plant then because you're focusing on a specific uh, trait. So the major advantage of the in vitro selection method is that uh, there is a specific kind of desirable trait being observed at the in vitro level rather than a general variation found at the plant level. So in the without in vitro selection process, you were looking for the general variations purely hit. It was like a chance of having it or not. But in the with in vitro selection, you are able to select the specific trait which is desirable to you. Now let's see that how this is done. So um, in the in vitro selection process, the callus that has been differentiated from the X plant, it is exposed to the medium that contains inhibitors such as toxins, antibiotics, amino acid analogs, or anything that is toxic to the plant, and it is from any specific disease. For example, uh, the rice plant, it was made resistant against Xanthomonas orizae by growing the callus of this plant with the bacterial cells that is the xanthomonas so let's see how this is being done so you take the plant from the plant you select the plant that you want to use you grow the callus out of it and then you maintain that callus now this callus it is broken down into small pieces in the medium and inside that medium you introduce one extra thing which you did not do in the without in vitro selection and that is the introduction of a compound from the pathogenic organism against which you want to make this plant resistant so you take the pathogenic organism you culture it you purify the filtrates it, the filtrate can have any kind of toxin or the product that is able to cause the disease in the plant so you are isolating that toxin and then you're determining the lethal concentration of the toxin and you are introducing this in the media in which you had placed the callus from the plant. Now, both of these are growing together. Now, after several selection cycles, you are isolating the tolerant callus. You are trying to observe that what are the callus pieces that are able to survive in this toxin as well. Some of the callus, some of the cells will obviously die because they won't be able to survive in those toxic conditions, but some of them will survive. The ones that will survive, you have to select those. 
you have to do the regeneration process from them, the root and the shoot formation, and then the plantlet formation. And then you grow that in the soil. And after growing that in the soil, you do the in vivo screening against the uh, toxin again. And after that, you grow the next line of the plants and you create progeny clones from each of the plant. And then you again test for the uh, disease resistance. And once you have identified that, okay, this specific trait is being introduced in the progenies as well, you select that plant and you label it as the soma clonal variant. So this is how the in vitro selection process is done. Now, there are several different factors that affect the production of soma clonal variants. First and foremost is the genotype and the explant source. So the source of explant is very critical for the soma clonal variants. It has been observed, for example, that in potato plants, which were regenerated from the callus of uh, uh, petioles and uh, reshes, they were much higher as compared to those regenerated from the callus of the reeds. So what kind of explant you are using that also determines the soma clonal variant percentage. Then the duration of the cell culture. So it has been reported that uh, when you increase the duration of the cell culture, there is a high probability of introducing the soma clonal variations inside the plant. Also, the growth hormone effects. Different growth hormones, they affect the uh, occurrence of soma clonal variants. And lastly, there are certain limitations as well to the soma clonal variations. And uh, this is that most of the soma clonal variations may not be useful. So, for example, when we talked about the without in vitro selection, there might be certain variations occurring in the plants, but they might not be useful to you. So, that's like a wastage of time. The variations, they occur in an unpredictable and uncontrolled manner. So this is something really important. And many a times the genetic traits obtained by soma clonal variations are not stable and they are not heritable. So this is also a primary concern because whenever you are trying to identify a variation inside the cell, you want that to come in the progenies as well. You want it to be inherited by the uh, plant uh, for the progenies. So this is sometimes not possible. You can observe a specific trait in one plant, but when you look for them in the progenies, it's not there. So thank you so much. That was all about the soma clonal variations.